Hello everybody, this is Edgar Eddy Fernandez, Safety Coach 4.0, the founder of Sufficient Limited and the creator of the Experiential Knowledge Solution uh, Program. Um, something that I want to talk to you today is, excuse me, <laughs> it's about um, digitaliza digitization has become um, deeply in the banking strategies. So it's the thing that this phenomenon, in other words, is digital transformation on the process hazard analysis. Why I'm taking this article from McKenzie and company from the, the digitization on the bank industry to the process hazard analysis? It's very simple. The bank industry is very well known in risk assessments. They have experts on risk assessment and, some, and to, uh, uh, something very similar to process hazard analysis. And the reason why is because they handle money is very simple. So they need to they need to be very, very aware of transactions, where the risk of those transactions, the risk of cert certain softwares to handle those transactions as well. They're having a lot of, I wanna start actually giving you how they are, I mean, what's the, the, the brief current state of this digital transformation of the banking industry and then jump to the process class and analysis. And by the way, this topic is going to be done in two videos. So the uh, the current state, it's uh, the digital transformation is having a lot of success in the banking industry. So because they are implementing those uh, those strategies in a very great critical areas, and they're having benefits. They are reducing risk. They are uh, they are able to control the transactions, obviously, and they're able to control the risk as well because they are, they are it's already identified and it's already embedded to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the digital uh, capabilities to minimize that, that, uh, that possibility of those risks. However, they're having a lot of stress at the same time. Uh, risk specialists, they're having uh, pro uh, issues with the time to stay in compliance with uh, uh, standards and regulations because this is so new that demands a lot of time and obviously, the compliance the compliance aspect of the company is it's evolving as well. So take take that in mind that in uh, in mind. So every these digital transformation or changes on your processes, they are being governed uh, as well. And all regulations depending on your industry, they are they want to be applicable depending on what uh, what process you are going to transform uh, to be, to make it digital. And the second stress they are having that it's uh, because this stuff is new actually, so it's this is uh, test and, and and fail test and fail, so that part they cannot control it very well, and obviously that part brings other risks as well, and uh, and it's difficult to determine them, to assess them, uh, because actually to be honest with you you are new with the technology as well, so you are learning at the same time. So the, here there is a question, actually, I consider there is a very fundamental question is process hazard analysis needs to go to the same process, needs to be digitized, needs to go to the digital transformation. The answer is tricky. It's difficult, actually, to give you an answer, yes or no. Yes, depending on where you are at the company right now, no is the same answer. But let me tell you what to do, uh, or let me not know what to do. Let me tell you, let me give you my recommendations and, and share my perspective is, the, is a better way to, to put it. Share my perspective on what we need to assess first if you, go, if you want to go to the digital transformation. So I'm not giving you an answer yes or no. It's, I think it's better to assess where we at right now before going to that transformation, is that your case? Because if not, you're gonna get a lot of stress. You're gonna panic, and you won't achieve any results. That's the reality, especially on these big changes, because also they bring cultural changes. So, the first part actually, it's uh, this this uh, digital transformation, according to the article, and actually I agree with that, has um, has three parts. But before of that, let me uh, actually they uh, create a new terminology that actually I'm, I'm seeing on front of my computer right now, as you can see, because I wanted to read it actually straight from, 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 from the article and not to change any, any word from them. So what is a digital risk? 
So now we need to become, or we need to get used to this new terminology. So digital risk is a term that encompasses all digital enablements that improve risk, effectiveness, and efficiency, especially process automation, decision automation, and digitized monitoring and early warnings. The approach uses workflow automation, optical, uh, optical character recognition, advanced analytics, including machine learning and artificial intelligence, and new data sources, as well as the application of robotics to the process and interfaces. Essentially, digital risk implies a concerted adjustment of process, data, analytics, and IT, and the overall or and the overall organizational setup, including talent and culture. So that's the digital risk. Um, actually, I, I gonna I have another idea. Make this video in two parts and actually write an article, short article, to put this definition there as well. So to giving you all the whole context. So now it's gonna affect everything. It's gonna affect now you assess. It's gonna change your process. You need to optimize following your workflow automation, and you need to recognize all the risk and hazards that you're going to be uh, on that new process and you need to collect data as well and all the and then there are going to be new sources to collect that data you're going to apply obviously artificial intelligence robotic internet of things interfaces machine learning and the last one is including talent and culture so now so who's going to do that how's going to be trained or where we're gonna get talent, I mean, we're gonna get that talent with that, the right skills. So all of that needs to take in consideration. So all this definition needs to take, needs to be analyzed deeply before going to the digital transformation from process has and analysis. So actually they have three parts, process, data, and organization. So let me tell you here, now here, let me tell you my opinion, my perspective on what might have to do before going to the digital transformation, and it's very uh, and it's 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 something that that, that I'm thinking um, I was thinking to 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 explain that to you. So you are for, you cannot go to digital transformation if you haven't evaluated and ass assessed, and identified and assessed all the hazards and risk, and they have, you you cannot sorry you cannot go to the digital transformation if you have you don't have the risk assessments the hazard and risk assessment on the whole operations, especially in manufacturing. That's include maintenance as well. And the hazard and risk analysis of the whole facility as well, inside and outside. So you need to now to take the whole facility, not the process, the process has their own process hazard analysis, right? And now the, the scope of the maintenance go, needs to go to process hazard analysis. Um, the building as well needs to go to the process hazard analysis, for example, building fire protection, for example, emergency, maintenance. So you need to establish the nodes for the building now to have to re hazard risk assessed. Operations that they are done outside of your company, that now security is one of the uh, important aspects that needs to be evaluated on the hazard analysis as well. So if you are using hazards, the, hazard, the hazardous and operability met methodology, you need to make sure that all your operations they are going, all the aspects of your, of your of operations, including the facility and maintenance, for example, goes to HACCPs first, way first. So you need to, to really, really sit down and make that inventory on that inventory and, and figure it out in what states you, what state you are right now, what is your current state on hazard and uh, process hazard analysis. On understanding the risk, I would say is one of the pillars, the four pillars for the uh, risk-based process safety. Once you have that, you can jump to LOPA. And then once you do LOPA, once you have, has, have from hazard to LOPA, if you want to do it or you want to stay in hazard, now you, you can start thinking to go to digital transformation. So the second part is data. Why? Because we need to make sure that you have all the possible data that is being generated for the current processes that you have in place. So first, we need to make sure that all the management system now 
the process had the, the process uh, safety management or the risk based process safety under 20 elements that are well implemented and you are you're taking advantage of the data you 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 manage very well the data that is being generated from that and you are in, in the current compliance with a standard regulation and codes depending on the on the process that you are on on it and the industry as well that's the first thing that, you, that I'd recommend that's my perspective to do instead of jumping and panicking what we're going to do with digital transformation now that's going to give you time to to actually prepare people from the last uh, the last words of, of the last step of the uh, definition the last part of the definition that is including talent and culture you need to assess that as well where you're going to get that talent from inside from outside how much is going to cost me to train people from inside or to bring them from outside how I mean my culture is going to be affected yes or no my company culture I need to go to to uh, to uh, um, to um, um, embrace the agile culture to have an agile organization I don't know but it's something that we need something that as an organization I recommend to sit down and analyze all those possible scenarios to avoid like I said the panic and the overwhelming so and then the last step I say, is organization. So or, um, or organization. So organize. I'm not talking about the organization like the company. So now the third step is organize. I mean, how you are going to collect the data. So first is process, processes, right? You process, you hazard and risk assessed. You're gonna get data from that, obviously, and you're gonna have action items as well or capas in the pharmaceutical industry, correct action and preventive actions. And then you need to organize the data to collect the data. I mean, any kappa is going to have data. It's going to have a scenarios that you can use in the future to design. So now you need to go to the model. It's uh, to create, estimate, aggregate, and manage. Create, so you have a scenarios. Estimate, hazard, risk, assess. Aggregate to, the, to, to your database and manage. So how, you gonna, how often you're going to review these and how often it's going to be updated. So, and that's the, um, the, the another thing that we need to actually uh, sit down and, and, and analyze is the organization and opera, opera, on our operating model. So, although digital transformation is, uh, digital transformation is going to take place uh, for sure in the most critical aspects of your um, company of the operation would say manufacturing operation financial operation of the whole comp of the comp or the whole company critical is the operations right and um, now what's gonna be but this is gonna uh, so actually now this digital transformation is is bringing something that is that I would say nobody's talking to or almost nobody, I would say, because there are people talking about it for sure. But it's something that is a pillar for the fourth industrial revolution. It's one of the components of this whole industry 4.0. The fourth industrial revolution is 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 changing um, uh, the 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 the, 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 uh, the lives and the industries as well. It's um, it's not a methodology. It's not. I mean, it's an environment. The fourth industrial revolution, and it's something that is requiring a lot is innovation. So although we're gonna we we're gonna have everything assessed, everything recognized, everything identified. Sorry. So uh, one thing that uh, is especially uh, process safety engineers, process safety managers, engineering managers, and inclusive um, CEOs and, and and presidents, something that they need to start looking at it and and start embracing, because this is gonna be the key for the future. Uh, not only in process safety or in safety in other areas is now uh, in, but now talking in this case of process safety and safety is a risk assist, risk specialist or safety specialist and process safety specialist engineers or managers they um, in conjunction with the uh, top management so they, we need to start, they need or the, the creation the, the culture of innovation uh, we need to start creating that culture as well because that that is actually at the same time you need to start thinking and implementing a very a designing a, a developing sorry a very robust innovation innovation culture 
what is innovation culture? But pretty much is understanding and optimizing the, the ideas of workers and em employees as well. So how are you going to optimize? How are you going to innovate? So every time you're going to really you're going to spend money on digital transformation to innovate? Absolutely not, because it's not applicable. You need to assess first. But how are you going to adapt to changes is something that absolutely you need to develop, and that's a culture of innovation. So how are you going to evaluate change on your market? How are you going to evaluate a change of the regulation or the standard or code? Is going to be applicable? I don't know, but it's something. Uh, and then if, if it is applicable, how are you going to implement it now with the current uh, process that you have in place? And is and is digitized. So how are we gonna implement that change? We need to spend a lot of money. Maybe yes, maybe not. But we need to spend a lot of money. Maybe not. There is other creative ways to implement uh, to be in compliance. Absolutely yes. So we need to discover that. We need to really, really implement a very robust innovation culture to be in compliance because this is going to be linked and actually you're going to go in parallel not in not, not in not, not in serious you're going to go in parallel with the digital transformation digitization compliance and your safety as well well compliance and safety we put it in the same same category right so standards and regulation that they, they're they're moving and also the transformation is moving as well but before going to that, like I said, we need to do all the steps that I'm that I'm that I told you before. Okay. So any um, any innovative ideas, any so now any all this uh, robust innovation culture needs to go with this, needs to go through the same model: is create, estimate, aggregate, and manage. So now with this process, what you do? What is uh, you're gonna establish many things. One is a new a good governance process at good hazard and risk analysis or assessments. So you're going to discover exactly uh, what is going on. And every digital change that you're going to do, you need to assess what's going to change, what's going to do. So I'll give you an example. Actually, we are doing that right now in process safety, right? So you go on, you change a PLC that is critical for your operation that change, that governs the temperatures high and low. And then you are handling flammable liquids and then goes above certain there are certain limits, what are you going to have? A spill of flammable liquid that is in a reactor, if you are heating, if you are cooling, or you are coming, or you are, um, I don't know, the process. So, but those, 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 pro I mean, those processes exist, right? If you are in the chemical industry, sometimes you work, you, 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 you need to, uh, you need, you, you heat, or you cold, I mean, reduce the temperature. And if you re reduce the temperature, you can, really, really that much your reactor. It goes to minus 20, minus 40, depends what you are um, set points, right? And you are safety limits as well. So you need to assess all of that. So like I said, it, uh, now another question, now you generate all of these, you have all these at the same time coming from FDA Health Canada or from the Minister of Labor or for your fire department or NFPA, um, non-FPA, sorry now of which fire department or uh, any other from OSHA or any other uh, local governmental uh, agency. So you need you need to, obviously those inspections many times they generate um, action items. So now, here is another fundamental question. It is convenient for the organization to digitize the process of uh, action items, CAPAS in the pharmaceutical industry, yes or no? I would say yes, but in this way. At least digitize the management of change process. And I think on that stage, many companies that uh, in the chemical industry, in the pharmaceutical industry as well, I think we, we um, 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 with the experience that I have in those industries, I think more, some industries or most of the, the companies, they, they have already linked this process, the management of change. So in other words, it's to any modification of change needs to go to that process so that means you need to lock the process you need to secure the process in the way that it's going to change it's going to be a change or modification a change is modification or new doesn't matter it's a change major change or minor change 
And then you need to uh, link those processes. Like, okay, now it's gonna be test. It's approved that change, yes or no. Now you're gonna implement. You're gonna uh, 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 um, um, implement the change. You're gonna has and resuscitate the change. Now it's gonna be approved. Once it's approved, actually the system is gonna allow you to. Um, no, actually, it's, so now it's it's pre-approved. You test. You 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 install. You 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 conduct the change. You test. Etc. And then now it's gonna go to the process for approvals. Once it's approved, and everything is tested and everything is assessed, has and risk assessed. Once it's approved, now the equipment can work. I mean, can be uh, uh, given back to the production area. For example, there is a, a some like critical equipment like reactor, and it's under uh, good manufacturing practices, and it's under the PHA under the PSM cover process. So. All the changes they need to be, they need to be local. They need to be uh, at least secure with the ma uh, change of management process to avoid any, any, anything, any incident that that could happen. No, yeah, and I'm not talking about incidents only in safety. I mean, any, any, any major uh, deviation on quality, for example. So how you gonna make sure that you won't have those scenarios once you implement that change? And needs to be digitalized. Uh, I would say yes, but that depends on the company. If now the company has an excellent and robust uh, Kappa uh, a manage a Kappa program, or have or they have a management program to uh, to actually to verify implementation and uh, of the Kappas, the corrective action or the preventive action, action. Sorry. Um, so if that is working for you very well, you don't need to change anything. So actually, that same process you can digitalize that process, but you don't know, you don't need to change anything. So um, to conclude, actually, the thing that I'm telling you, in other words, so first you need to assess. To summarize, you need to assess what you have that is in compliance. Now, with the met with the things that you have, we, for example, you are using has the process hazard analysis hazards. So you have hazard and risk assess everything that is needs to be covered on that one. Everything is in compliance. If there is, you can jump to LOPA you want it or not. Now you go to collecting the data collection and then you go to organize that data and then we need to assess it and, uh, and update it. And uh, how you're gonna control your changes. Um, next time on the second video, I'm gonna talk about more digital risk and other scenarios that we need to take in play and we need to be um, uh, assessed. So actually have it here. Um, now we want to talk about uh, sizing opportunities, um, target risk processes, for example, uh, and other things that to, to conclude this one. And then I'm going to write an article um, to um, at least to collect all, all this information that I'm, I'm giving you and attach the video as well. So uh, thank you very much, guys, to um, watching this video. Hopefully this information helps you to to um, really, really um, uh, not panicking about digital transformation because really you don't need, um, I would say you don't need to go right away. And maybe, no, I would say not right away, maybe you don't need to go depending on the process that you have. So uh, you need to be really calm down, assess everything that you have. Everything needs to be in compliance. If not, put it in compliance and then we'll move on from there. But uh, on the next video, I'm gonna give you more information about this. Uh, so ask yourself your process hazard analysis or your process or your process safety management needs to go needs to be digitized all your uh, governance or your compliance uh, management system they need to be digitized yes or no um, your process hazard analysis they need to be digitized corrective action and preventive actions they need to be they need, they need to go through the same process or your management of change needs to be on, needs to be on the digital transformation process. It's something that you need to answer yourself. When, what, where, I mean, analyzing and taking in account the things that you have right now and assess the current state that you are right now. Thank you very much, guys. Have an excellent day. Bye.